Hello, my lovers of historic food and hopefully the Titanic. This week is going to be so much better than last week, I promise. Um, we accidentally made gruel from the third class menu, but we're going to move up in the ship to first class. I'll put the menu here and we're going to go ahead and make something called chicken a la Maryland served with mashed potatoes. Now, the mashed potatoes I got from our Loney's cookbook that was published in 1912. Let's hope the mashed potatoes taste a lot better than the rice soup. And the chicken a la Maryland, I actually had to do a little research on this one. I found a website that has a lot of vintage historical recipes specifically from the state of Maryland. And that's the one that we decided to go with. Um, it does have one odd little ingredient to it, but I've actually had something similar to this when I was in South America. And so I actually think this is going to be really, really good. I'm excited to try it because I haven't actually had this particular dish since uh, I've been there in South America. And so I really kind of want to try it again and see if it's as good as I remember or if I can make it as good as I remember. So let's go ahead and get started. I've got most of our ingredients ready. So I'm gonna turn this camera around and we're gonna start recreating a first class dinner on the Titanic. First, let's go ahead and get our potatoes ready. It's interesting to note that on the Titanic, there were 40 tons of potatoes. Now I'm peeling mine by hand, but fortunately for the Titanic kitchen crew, they did have an electric potato peeler. Now, once you have your potatoes boiling on the stove, let's go ahead and get what we'll need to make our chicken ready. You'll need three separate bowls or plates. And in the first one, you'll place your flour. In the second, you'll put your eggs lightly beaten. And in the third, you'll place your breadcrumbs. Now I've gone ahead and removed my chicken from the refrigerator where I had it soaking in buttermilk for about one hour. I'll go ahead and drain it slightly, then we'll dredge it in the flour, then the egg, then in your breadcrumbs, and then we'll place it in a baking dish for the oven. You'll then bake this at a 375 degree oven for about 30 to 40 minutes, turning once halfway through. Also, chicken seemed to be just as popular on Titanic as potatoes because there was 25,000 pounds of chicken on the Titanic. Now while our chicken is baking, let's go ahead and prep the rest of our ingredients. Go ahead and cut the amount of butter you'll need. Then we'll peel our bananas and get them sliced. But before we actually fry our bananas, let's go ahead and start our bechamel sauce. Go ahead and completely melt your butter and then add your flour that will thicken into a roux. Then you'll add your milk in stages, whisking in between until you've used up all the milk. Now you'll whisk that all together until it thickens. But before finishing the sauce, I decided to go ahead and get the mashed potatoes ready. So I just turned the eye down as low as it would go and let the sauce just keep warm. So the mashed potatoes really are very simple. You're just going to incorporate your butter, your milk, salt, and pepper, and then mash those together until you get it to the taste that you desire. Now I just use my old fashioned potato masher. But if you prefer less lumpier mashed potatoes, then go ahead and use your food processor. Now that the potatoes are done, let's go ahead and get our bananas ready. So go ahead and melt your butter in a skillet and add your bananas. Once fried on one side, go ahead and turn over to finish on the other. And that is all you need for this really simple but effective garnish. While those are frying, let's go ahead and finish off our sauce. So we'll go ahead and add in our nutmeg and our salt, giving that a really good stir. And that's it. This sauce is really simple, but so delicious. And here we are flipping the bananas to fry on the other side. And it doesn't take long because we are ready to dish up. 
So we'll plate it up as they would the Titanic. You'll have your chicken with your sauce poured on top, garnished with your bananas, and then a side of mashed potatoes. This is a simple and easy first class lunch served on the last day of the Titanic. Okay, so can we just acknowledge the fact that we made another all beige dinner? Yeah. Which seems to be like a running theme on this channel. So we've got our <laughs> love of butter, <laughs> which we use a lot of it. And we tend to make a lot of beige food for whatever reason. Um, it might be because we make a lot of historical food. Maybe it was just all beige. I don't know. Uh, they needed all the calories they could get. I, guess. I yeah, I guess so. So if I was actually like serving this as a, a dinner, um, I've got some asparagus in the fridge that I bought yesterday. I'll probably cook some asparagus to put with it, or like a really nice green salad. Yeah. You know, put yeah, a, little a little color, color. on your plate. Yeah. yeah. Of course, bananas. While they're beige, they're not exactly like a typical beige food. I don't no, think. that's I mean, true. Kinda... And that's actually the one I'm most excited about. Oh, yeah. um, I don't know. When you were in Mexico, did you have fried yeah, plantains? We, yeah, we had the plantains. Oh, okay. It's so good. <laughs> so I think I'm going to try the chicken first okay. and then I'm going to go for a banana. It's tender. Cuts easy. Oh, that looks so good. Mm. Oh, yep. Mm hmm. That definitely makes up for last week. I just got a lot of, like, the. <laughs> okay, mm. okay, okay, okay. Oh. Mm. That's sweeter than the plantains. Mm hmm. It is. It's almost like candy. It, it, oh, it is. Yeah. You taste the butter first, yeah. then a little bit of crunch, and then you get the burst of the sweet banana. That's good. It's an odd combination, I think. It is. To put chicken and bechamel sauce, I'm probably saying that really wrong, and then like a fried banana, but. I think it takes a, it takes a typical banana, like the, the Cavendish that we're all familiar with, mm -hmm. and makes it almost taste closer to the Gros Michel, which I don't know if you've... Gros Michel is the flavor that's used for banana flavoring in like taffy and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Oh, okay, yeah, so you're kind of elevating it to a candy flavor yeah, it, in it a way. Tastes, yeah. it, it does make it sweeter, which yep. I think the Gros Michel, which... I mean, that's a long history of banana craziness. I won't get into all that. But. No. <clears throat> but I think the the chicken, the bechamel sauce, I was expecting more of like a gravy. Yeah, but it's got a little nutmeg in it. Yeah, and it, it actually like changes the flavor just enough to like almost lighten it. A yeah. Little. Like it doesn't taste like I'm eating like a fried chicken no, as much. Yeah, it really does make it. Oh, and by the way, the mashed potatoes are good. Um, which, you know, we did that from the 1912 recipe, mm. but, um, you know, it hasn't changed in 109 years. You know, your butter, your milk, your salt and pepper, yeah. you know, it's a mashed potato. Um, but it's good. I yeah. like it. Yeah. Um, I can see why it was paired on the Titanic, yeah. you know, with this. Um, you know what? I'm just going to say this is one of my favorite chicken dishes that we've done on the show. The breading is perfect. The and I and like you said, I like the fact that it's not a heavy gravy. Right. It's, it's yeah. more of a refreshing kind of it balances, lightness to yeah. it. Yeah. I mean you take a typical fried chicken and it, and a fried chicken to me seems kind of heavy. Right. But right. Then you add the, with the sauce the like it lightens it instead of weighs yeah. it down even more. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I was kind of expecting it to do. Yeah. So and it's a really good balance. This, I don't know why I haven't done this since like, oh, I, know. I mean, it's been years since I've been in South mm. America or Central America, but 
I missed this. I don't know why I didn't do it when we got back, you know, to the States on a regular basis because can you eat a regular banana now? <laughs> can you just peel it know. and eat it? Like I, I kind of want it like this all the time. But this um, particular meal was served the last lunch on the Titanic. So it was April 14th of 1912, uh, and the menu survives because someone stuck it in their pocket and got into a lifeboat with it. So, you know, we know exactly. Yeah. Somebody now, Somebody wanted to remember what they ate that day. Yeah, it was a souvenir. <laughs> yeah. You know, you just take a souvenir with you. Um, now, of course, they probably would have had more. You could order more courses yeah. with it if and you wanted to. Yeah, stuff, I'm sure. Um, but now this particular dish, the reason I picked it is because I'd never heard of chicken a la Maryland before. Mm. And apparently, bananas have a long history in Maryland. It, it, it's, really? I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I actually looked up um, just some banana farms that are in Maryland right now of people growing, you know, bananas in their backyard. Um, and there was apparently a large conglomerate of sellers of bananas in Maryland. In Maryland. In Maryland, yeah. So Interesting. they kind of, they paired this with the yeah. chicken as kind of like an ode um, to Maryland. Maryland. Yeah, I thought that was actually kind of cool. That's so amazing. given the fact that White Star Line knew that there were going to be a lot of uh, rich Americans traveling in first class, White Star Line actually integrated both British and American foods um, on the menu. So this was kind of an ode to your American passenger. And I'm really glad that we made it because yeah. this is kind of unusual, but I think a dish that needs to come back. I agree. And everyone in Maryland is probably saying right now, oh, we've been making that for a long time. But we had you no know, idea. I had no idea. I grew up in Michigan and now we live in Tennessee. So maybe we need to look and see if there's an odd chicken dish from those two states. I don't know. But uh, yeah, kudos to Maryland for coming up with like a really cool combo that actually works and yeah, is really, really good. good. And what else can you say? It's like a really good meal. Yeah. Also, I like the fact that this is a first class lunch on the Titanic 1912. However, the recipe is extremely accessible to a modern cook, especially a home cook. So you don't need special equipment. You don't need a lot of time. It's not an expensive dish right. to make. And it's something that's really cool. You can bring a piece of 109 year old history alive. Which is kind of odd for and not a lot of recipes time. that we've tried. Ex oh, exactly. Yeah, that's why I'm really happy with yeah. this one right now because some of our other Titanic dishes were really expensive and really time consuming. Yeah. But this is, so much. is the perfect middle. It tastes really good. It's probably not something you've tried yeah. before, uh, but it's really easy and cheap to make. So to me, that's a perfect little, you know, Titanic intro. Yeah. If you want to just make something from the ship, but you don't really have a whole lot of time yeah. to put into it. So yeah, I'd give this a five stars, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's an excellent meal. As for Loney's, now I said I wasn't really gonna rate this cookbook because it made gruel last week. <laughs> uh, and we were pretty mad at this cookbook. I think the mashed potatoes kind of vindicated it, but can you ever really mess up mashed potatoes in a cookbook? It's, I mean, it'd be if you hard. Don't put enough butter in them. Yeah. Or it, not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it'd be hard to mess this up. Yeah. I think. Um, now the cookies I made out of it for a tea time were good. Mm. So you know that was a surprise. I got one more thing I'm gonna try out of here. Okay. So I would say I'm still not gonna rate it because it is a historical cookbook. So some of the things you may not be able to make anymore. Right. Um, so just bear that in mind. If you really want to get some historical cooking and you really want something from the era of Titanic or the year that, you know, she sailed and sank, then yeah, I would give this a pickup if you find it like I did on eBay for a few dollars. Right. You know, yeah. it, it'd be worth it. Yeah. So. For a piece of history. Yeah, for a piece of history. It's $5 <laughs> for a 109 year old piece of history. Yeah. So that's, you know, pretty, pretty cool. cheap. Yeah. yeah. 
So we're going to go ahead and wrap this up and eat our bananas because they're calling my name. <laughs> and stay tuned for next week because we're actually going to jump ship, literally, and go from Titanic to her sister ship, RMS Olympic, who did not sink but had a really insane career mm. a long career so we're gonna delve into a few of the oddball things that happened with the olympic and why she's uh named old reliable but i don't know had some accidents in her history so we'll go through that and try her food and see if she stacks up to titanic i have high hopes and we'll see you then thanks for watching this one bye if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button for future videos. In the meantime, here are two videos you may enjoy. Thanks for watching.